Besides graphic views like plans and perspectives, Revit provides text-based views of the objects in the model, using schedules to list and sort and add up information about any kind of component that you place there. Doors, casework, light fixtures, furniture, rooms, whatever. Schedules are a compact way to organize repetitive information about the objects in the, in the project, instead of listing all the information about each object in a text note on the plan itself. Schedules are simultaneous views of the model database, just like graphic views. Add a door in the plan and it shows up immediately on the schedule, delete it from the schedule, and it is erased immediately from the plan. The first step in creating a door schedule is to give each door instance its own unique number, called its mark. We display the schedule on the appropriate sheets to provide the link between each symbol shown in the plan and the information about it, type, dimension, materials, and the like that appears in the schedule. Revit accomplishes this by providing a text or numeric tag for each kind of thing to be scheduled. To tag an individual door, use annotate tag by category and select the door. If needed, load the door tag family from the annotations architectural category. You can have this little leader with the tag or not. If you select the tag and uncheck leader, you won't see that and you can just put the tag wherever you want. Uncheck leader, drag it down. To avoid the leaders in the first place, annotate tag by category and uncheck leader as you're creating them and then you will get the uh, door numbers placed like that. We can just keep going click, click, click and paste placing tags, but uh, Revit is here as a time-saving tool. So if we go to annotate, go to annotate tag all, we can say tag everything that can use a door tag, please apply. And Revit puts door, door numbers on, door tags on all the doors. Doors are initially given a number corresponding to the order they were placed in the model, which is rarely useful you know, I've been working on this model for a long time, and you know, this is number. This was the fifth one I placed. This was the 38th. Uh, you know, they they jump all around. They can be renumbered sequentially in some logical order, or better yet, given numbers corresponding to the rooms they lead to. Like door 101 leads to room 101. If there are several doors leading into the same room, you can use 101.1 or 101.2 or 101A and 101B. And to change a door number, you can either click on the door. And in properties, change its number. Or you can click on the tag, click inside on the text of the number, and change it there. Whichever one you change, the other one uh, changes to match. It's really the same number, just showing up in two different places. Architectural drawings typically treat each door as a unique instance because even two doors that are, are apparently similar hinge differently. They might be keyed differently depending on who has a master key and who does not. The lock set for a bathroom uh, might be stainless steel so it won't rust, whereas all the others are, are some other material that, that looks better. So what we'll be doing here in a door schedule is to list every door and see all the information we have about that. And the way we do that is view, schedules, Schedule quantities, we'll slide down to doors. The default name door schedule is provided. We'll just keep that and we can leave all the rest the same. And what shows up is the properties palette for this door schedule. What we have here are all the fields, all the kinds of information that are available for doors in Revit. And here we're interested in only a few things. We're interested in the, the family, which would be like single flush door. We're interested in its height. We're interested in its mark, which is its, its unique number, you know, like the uh, door number 11 over here. And we're, for the time being, we're interested in its width. And I think that will do for the time being, okay? And this creates immediately a door schedule that shows all of our doors. Here, here's the unique mark of each one, the family, what kind of a door it is, its height and its width. 
you can see that this is not a very useful schedule just on the face of it. We really would like to have the mark over in the first column. So we, when we look up door 101 on the schedule, we can just easily find it here in, in numeric order. So when a door schedule is the active view, we have its schedule properties, which has five main controls. And the first is what information are we providing? We'll click on edit. And you'll notice here that the you'll see that the fields arrange vertically here, family height, family height, mark, and width are the same fields over here arranged horizontally, family height, mark, and width. So if we want to rearrange them here, we arrange them here. And we'll start with the mark. That's the unique number for each door. We'll go up, up arrow and down arrow, uh, family, which is the, the kind of a door we got there. And then width usually comes first, like a say a 30 by 68 door. And that should be OK. And we'll say OK. And now we have mark, family, width, and height. You notice that because I renumbered that door to 345, uh, these are somewhat out of sequence. So the next thing we want to do is in sorting and grouping to tell it to sort this uh, schedule, just like we're sorting a, a range in a spreadsheet, uh, to sort it by mark, sort it by number, and to do that in ascending order, one, two, three, four, five. And so 345 should move down to the end, OK? Uh, and, it, and indeed, it does. And then width and height uh, are, are obvious. Go back to the plan. I did ZE for zoom extents. Typically, windows schedule differently from doors because whereas doors are potentially unique, uh, windows by and large are almost all identical. For instance, all these along the top of the building are, are all the same window. Same with these larger ones across the front. So instead of tagging each window by its mark, which is its own unique number, windows are usually tagged by type. And when we apply tags to windows, annotate, tag by category, window, and then tag this one by category, we'll see that they're the same type. If I tag, tag this one down here, it's, it's, a, it's a type 5. Uh, escape, escape. So it would be a little tedious to go around the whole building. So let's just go to tag by tag all, tag everything with a window tag that we can, OK? And all our, all our windows are tagged. A window schedule will be a lot shorter because instead of having you know, 50 lines, it'll just have two, one for the type four and one for the type five windows. So again, we'll go into view, schedule, schedule quantities, scroll down for windows, okay. And for them, we will include the type mark. So it's not the, in the, not the individual number of the window, but the, the mark associated with the type of that window, that is, type mark. And then we'll do family, which is like double hung or casement. And then we'll do width, width and height. And again, you can pick these in any order and then rearrange them. But uh, this is actually how I would like to see them. Visual light transmittance made a mistake. I'll just get rid of that one. So we'll expect to have family type mark, the family, the width, and the height. OK. And there's that. Now, at this point, we're seeing each individual window listed, which we really don't need to see because all of these fixed windows are exactly the same thing. What I would like to see here, instead of uh, 15 lines with type number four, I would like to have type, the type mark family width height and then how many. The, the count of the number fours. So I'm going to need to add the count field as well to this window schedule. Fields. Count. Add. OK. And then to, con to consolidate these, so we end up with just two rows in the schedule. I'll go to sorting and grouping. And first of all, sort by type mark. So it'll be the fours and then the fives. And then instead of itemizing every instance, bop, 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 we will let the count field tally how many there are. OK. So a, a much cleaner way, takes up less space on the title block, and it makes it really easier for anybody estimating this or knowing how much to order just immediately to see uh, how many they need to 
they need of each one. So to see these maybe on a, on a sheet with the plan, we can go to Sheets, right-click New Sheet. Okay, no title blocks. Guess we have to go get one. Have to load a title block into this drawing. Load. And we'll scroll up to English Imperial. Scroll down to title blocks. And we'll pick this nice big 30 by 42 one. Okay. Then I'll drag my level one plan in there. And then when we created the schedules, Revit added this folder, if you like, to the project browser. And I'll bring the door schedule over. Ooh, big fella. We'll work on that. And I'll bring the window schedule in as well. Both of these can be adjusted using the uh, tabs here. Now as you try to get that so that the longest, the longest, the longest piece of text in each one uh, fits in there so we don't have to take up too much space. Now this looks awfully big. Let's start drawing here. And I, I just know that that's bigger than it needs to be. So let's go back to this, this schedule, the door schedule, and take a look at its appearance. We can pick a tab from here or from here, appearance. Uh, and I see that in this schedule, my title text is a quarter inch, my header text is a quarter inch, but my body text, all this stuff is, is also a quarter, and that only needs to be the 332nd, just way too big. Uh, a quarter inch takes up too much space on the page. Okay, and go back to our sheet. We can see that's shrunk down considerably. Yeah, much better. And I'll go to the window schedule as well. Appearance, body text, 330 seconds. Okay, and back to the sheet. We see that that's all take up a lot less space here. And if you want these to be even smaller, we can change, we can just change the word. Instead of type mark, we could just say ID. We can change count to QTY quantity, and then drag these in to take up even less space in the um, on the sheet. I like window schedule being this big. It seems odd to me to have width uh, these letters be just the same size. So let's go to window get back to window schedule and appearance. And I I think I want to make a style that is an eighth of an inch high instead of a somewhere between between these two cancel okay so I'll go back to a sheet if I want to create a uh, create a text style uh, first I'll just place one here annotate text just place a piece of text and we can see the two choices I have for text right now are Arial and 330 seconds I want to edit the type of that, duplicate, duplicate, one eighth inch Arial, and then change that to one eighth of an inch. Change its tab size down smaller as well. Not really that necessary, apply, okay. So that's smaller, and now I want to apply this uh, to these guys. So I can go back to my window schedule, go to appearance, and change the header text to one eighth inch Arial, which is now part of the project. Okay, and we go back to the sheet, and we see that that's more reasonable. Uh, delete, much more reasonable, and I'll do the same thing with the door schedule. These are all. You know, we can set up a standard schedule type and keep keep using that, but right now we'll just uh, do this. Door schedule, appearance, 
change this to eighth inch aerial. Okay. And then out we go. And then that that looks better. And I don't have to have um I don't have to have lots of space on the on the sheet just to, to deal with the just to deal with the, the names of the titles. Okay, so there's that. This is pretty straightforward. Where this gets interesting is when we're scheduling rooms, but first we have to create some rooms. At this point, we have walls and we have pieces of text telling us what this is, but we don't have actual rooms yet, which we need to create in Revit just the way we need to create anything else. And that's with architecture room. And I'll just start here. Uh, I know I want this one to be named 100 and 101, but we'll get to that in a minute. I want this one to be named 102. So if I go in here and call this 102, then if I go to create more rooms, it knows to make them be 103, 104, 105, like that. And I'm going to quickly place all these. Um, there is a place rooms automatically. Place rooms in all closed and bounded areas in the current level greater than 0.25 square feet. Let's try that. 37 rooms created automatically. Well, that, that was cool. Okay, that's a fast way of doing that. They're all just called room now. They don't have the names. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is go quickly through and rename each of these. Uh, rename each of these so that, well, you see one thing this did a little weirdly is because this area was bigger, this is just like a mechanical chase or something, because this room was bigger than, uh, I forget what it said, a quarter of a square foot or something rather, it made that a room and I'm going to, I'm just going to get rid of those rooms. Uh, select it, hit the delete key. And I get this little message saying a room tag was deleted, but the corresponding room still exists. You can place, you know, we're not going to do that. Uh, control C, control C, control Z. So I'm just going to go quickly place all these rooms. And, and I'm just sort of the numerical order uh, go, going like this so that it's, it's easy to find them in, in our plans. Notice so I'm, I'm ignoring the closets for the time being. I'll show you why in a minute. But I'm trying to get this whole sequence of, of uh, rooms laid out with uh, uh, sequential numbers. OK. And one of the reasons I, I wanted to avoid doing the closets uh, initially was I like to, I do want to place rooms here, but I want to have them be numbered 120.1 and 120.2. And if I just kept on numbering, they'd been 121 and 122, and I didn't, didn't want that. So now I'll go back to room. And I can go and change their numbers to 120.1. Now do the same with the little closet over here. RM for room. 123.1. The bathroom, because it's sort of entered off the staff lounge, decided that'll be 131.1. Now we have to deal with, in this case, two spaces that adjoin, and we want them treated separately for flooring and budgeting purposes, just understanding things. So I want to think of them as two separate rooms that, that there happens to be no wall between. And the way we do that is to use a room separator line, which for the purposes of rooms, Revit treats just as if it were a wall. So when I go to create rooms,
it creates them as two separate rooms. And we'll call that 130. We'll call, oh, this, is one, this is the one I wanted to have called 100. And this being 101. Oops. When this happens, it's because instead of clicking once on the tag and then once on the text to edit it, I double click the tag, which always starts the edit family command. If that happens, just close and exit without saving and continue. And this being 101. Okay. Uh, do a similar thing for the corridors. Uh, this one's pretty easy to see. We'll just do our architecture room separator and just do it from here to here and here to here. And then create a room here and we could schedule the east and west walls for paint colors and that kind of stuff. Uh, our M for room, create the room here. And then a question comes up of how we deal with these corridors. And I think so that I can keep this whole wall uh, part of this corridor and then this whole wall, I think what I do is use a room separator that just goes diagonally from here to here. You know, the, the exact point isn't that isn't that crucial. And down here. So when I go back to create a room, it will see this space as a room, and then this space as a room, and then this space as a room. And when we see that all our spaces have been, been covered with the blue, we can uh, escape out of there and get ready to create our room schedule. So that's in view, schedules, schedule quantities, scroll down to rooms, everything's fine. And again, we have, let's just see what we all have. We'll pick them this time and then rearrange them later. We definitely want the area. We would like to know its name, which at this point is just room. We'll have to go change that. And we would like its number. 101, 102, and there's obviously you can see a lot of other information if we'd chosen to enter it. Some things are already part of Revit, like what level it's on and its its perimeter, you know, the bounded perimeter. Other things we would have to add, like uh, like like occupant. But area name and number is fine for right now. We'll say okay, and we see we have all these different rooms with their names and numbers. Now I'm going to take uh, time to uh, Fix all the names and then we'll fast forward to after that's done. Okay, with all those labeled and the original text labels erased, let's see what the room schedule looks like now that we have all these rooms created. So we now have area, name, and number. Again, I want to change the order. So we have number, name, and then area. So that'll be our fields. And we'll put the number up first, and then the name, and then the area. Presto changeo. And then we'll open this up a little bit to be able to see everything. And we have formatting options here. For instance, I would like the uh, area column to be right justified so that the numbers read more clearly. We'll go into formatting area and say I want it to be right aligned. Okay. So the numbers read up better to add up the way that numbers are supposed to. I think the rest is all right. And then I would like to see these in numerical order, sorting and grouping. And we want to sort by room number just to make that uh, explicit here. Okay, some minor changes there. Revit can perform a number of calculations on numerical fields. So let's go to formatting. And I, first I wanna tell him that area is a field that I would like to have be able to do calculations on. So we pick area and say, uh, calculate totals. We don't, don't need those other guys, calculate totals. So this is just enables that idea that we want 
that area is a column that we want to add up. And then to actually place the totals in, we go to sorting and grouping again and say that we would like to have totals added up here. Let's just start and see what this is, the easy one, and say, OK. So the grand total for the whole building is 5,145 square feet, and that there's 42 rooms. If we then just done sorting and grouping, and then say my grand totals just do totals, totals only, we will get just this number. I like to add a, a comma to this thousand just to make it really clear what's going on. So that's also in formatting. Area. And my field format for that will be the way that the project is, is set up. It does not use commas uh, in the thousands, but I would just like to change that and say, don't use the project settings. Let me use digit grouping. And we'll say, OK. And OK. And we pick up the thousand and there would be any thousands in there uh, if there were any. So I would like to see this a little more broken down. I would like to have uh, departments assigned to each of these rooms. Let's see, I've got sales, I've got finance, I've got research. I would like, and I guess circulation for, for corridor. I've got some room down here. Uh, we'll have to go find what that is, number 134. So what we can do is go back to fields and add department. And let's say number name area, let's move department up a notch. Okay, and we can just enter that department information right here since it doesn't yet exist in the drawing. The department that each room belongs to can be set in each room's properties, but it's really easier to do here so you don't miss any rooms. And I'm gonna have one department called shared, which will include reception, waiting, lab, corridors. I'll use all caps for this, shared. And then when I come to the next line, if I click the down arrow, I can I can pick from a list of ones that have been done. I'll do that the same thing with the conference room. Sales will be a whole new department. So when I click on this one, on its down arrow, I get it. I, sales becomes one of my choices. With finance, that's clearly a department of its own. Finance secretary now belongs to that one. Finance office. Oh, let's say lab is its own department. This is definitely shared. Janitor is shared. We'll make IT its own department. Those are those two little closets inside the IT, IT server, IT office, research, research. And I think this is a little closet inside the inside the research secretary's office. So we'll make that be research as well. Research manager. Can I pick several of these at a time? Guess not. Well, it's a little tedious, but you only have to do it once, so. Staff lab is shared. Research office is research. Staff lounge is shared. Not sure what 134 is, we'll go check. Corridor is shared, corridor is shared, corridor is shared. Let's go to see what one, go see about room. 134. Oh, here we are, room 134 in corridor. Okay. 
Okay. So we go back to our schedule and we'll make that corridor be a shared space as well. Now, I would like to see these separated out by department. So right now they're sorted in numerical order by room number. What we really wanna do is see them grouped by department first and then by room number within that. So we'll go sorting and grouping. And instead of sorting by number, we'll sort by department, still in alphabetic order. And then when that's done within each of those, we'll separate them by, sort them by room number, okay? So here's finance all together, IT all together, lab all together, like that, shared, 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 shared. I wanna put a line in between those just to make it a little clearer what's going on. A blank line, I mean, sorting and grouping. So what we're saying is after each department, insert a blank, after each department is done, insert a blank line, okay? Makes that a little cleaner. And then I realized, you know, I would like to have a totals for each of these guys. I've got a total for the whole building, but how does that work for, for each of them? So we'll go in and say, back to sorting and grouping. And I wanna say in the, in the footer, which is the line below each department, I wanna add totals. So these will add up and show up here. These will add up and show up here. Okay. And my grand total is still the same, but I have them divided out by department. And I realize a couple of things here too. I, I really, you know, this is all taking up a lot of space, research, 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 research. I would just like to have, let's say, research up here and just be able to not even see this column. So again, in formatting, I want, actually want to, I want to keep the idea of department here in this schedule because that's what we're using to sort these guys together. But I just want to hide that, that guy. I want to hide department. So they're still all grouped together, but that, you know, it's like an invisible column right here. And then I want to put up at the top of each of these and the header of each of these groups, the name of the department. So we'll go back to formatting, sorry, sorting grouping. In the header of this one, it will automatically put the department name up there. So we should have finance, IT, like that, okay. So we've got finance and its rooms and a total and a space. Maybe we don't need the space anymore. Let's, let's maybe take that out. So that's good. Save a little room on the uh, on the sheet. Uh, all neatly summed up department totals and then and then a grand total. We could put to in the total number of rooms, per department, and then per building, but that's not that interesting right now. So here's our room schedule. Let's go take a look at that on the sheet. Oh, we can need to put it on the sheet, don't we? It's not there yet. Here's our room schedule. We'll uh, open this up, open that up, open that up. At this point, uh, this is uh, really too big for this page or maybe it would just fit, but uh, not if we uh, add some more rooms. So something, something we can do with any schedule is to, right here is to break it, let's move it out here, is to break it into multiple panels. And as we grab it and shorten it here, it will lengthen on the other end. And I think I'll just slide this so that I get all of research into one, uh, one column, get its total there and then start with sales at the top. Uh, it looks like this still isn't gonna fit if I don't put them down here. So I can move this over here and move this over here. Uh, I can further split this one. And then as I scroll here, we have any of these uh, options we, we want. There, something like that. Will those fit? Almost. Well, let's take research up here. So it starts there. Try 
trying to include the total for each department that we're doing. And I can just uh, keep on doing this as far as uh, as far as it needs to go. So pretty malleable malleable information. If you decide, you know, I would really rather have. Oh, you know, we need to change. This would help too. Right now, we still have all these at uh, at, at quarter inch high. We we don't need to do that. Let's go back to the room schedule. Uh, appearance. Change this to one eighth inch high. Change this to the three thirty seconds, and this will make all the difference in terms of spacing that onto the sheet. Yeah. Yes. So if we realize, oh, I have more of those than I need, I I, I would really like to combine them. I'll, I'll bring them back all into one at first. When you select a part of a schedule and then just drag its little control and slide it in, it will just add itself back to the end of the uh, other. And here these all fit, uh, as it turns out. Move that up a little bit. And then move the room schedule up a little bit. And, and we're good. And we can save a lot of space horizontally. So very good information. This is something that Revit can do because Revit knows everything about these. It knows about the departments. It knows about the room names and numbers, and it calculates the errors. It can do all this and keep it updated as the model changes. Let's say you move a wall between a research office and a sales office. Each of those total, totals will, will automatically change. And bear in mind when we export things to Excel, uh, those numbers won't change. Let's do a little bit extra with this. Let's I want to get a visual take on which which departments these are in, and make sure that things are. I've got my sales people generally together and my IT people generally together. So let's go back to the view itself. To do that, we need to assign a color scheme to this plan, and that's over in the properties of the floor plan color scheme. And what we want to do is we want to color our rooms by what department they're in. So color the rooms by what department they're in, apply, okay, okay. And we see that our shared spaces do this, our sales office does that, our finance does this. So it looks like they're all, they're all pretty, pretty tightly together. If uh, this room was gonna be given over to sales because of some personnel changes, we can go into this space, uh, click on the room, the big X there on the room, then we get this room's own properties, and we can change this department, say, to uh, sales, at which point it would pop out as a different color than all these guys down here, and maybe there's some other horse trading that goes on to get this research, this, we have to change its name to sales office, um, to, get, to get this one over to there. If you want to change these colors, they're pretty bland, and they're chosen because they're light, and we want to be able to see everything on top of them. Uh, we can change those colors if we just go into the color scheme and we can change uh, anything here we want to anything uh, else that we want. Powie Zowie. So that that's your choice. And while we're at it, we can create a legend to tell which color goes with which department. Just click it and it and there it is. That's all you have to do. And if I crop my view, change the crop region visible, and make sure that that's included. So when I take it out onto the sheet, um, we'll be able to see that. Go back to the sheet. There's our department legend um, over there. We can drag all these schedules down underneath maybe. Anyway, so we got those all all looking looking the same. Now I do need to fix the doors. I need to I want to get the door numbers to agree with the room numbers. So we'll go back here. We'll call this um, to change the door number. As noted before, I can either select the door and change the number over here, or select the tag click inside and change the 
change the number there. It's the same number, just showing up in two different places. Because it's sometimes awkward to pick that. Sometimes picking the door and just doing it in properties is easier, 102. Uh, so I'm going to quickly do this and then, and then fast forward uh, to that point in the process. There are third-party add-ins to Revit that will automatically number doors based on the room that they are swinging into, which is uh, a nice thing to have. Okay, that's done. All doors named in numbers according to their rooms. We can see with these small rooms, um, we gave the room number, big room 123, small room 121. 123.1 and the same and the same with the door over here for the finance office which has two doors I just gave it 113 and 113.1 and there's no hard and fast rule for this be sort of a, an office standard way to do that pretty much as long as you're consistent with within a project that's really all that counts for instance it'd be confusing to have some of them be 113.1 and others to be 142a for instance it would be nice to keep that all in the same family that's enough for the door room and window scheduling. Let's talk about furniture scheduling. Over here in the FF&E plan, we have pretty much everything here except the lab and IT and, and janitor stuff, but pretty much all the office furniture is there. Some rooms left to be furnished. So for the furniture schedule, uh, let's just see how that how that works. Um, one thing will be interesting is, is here we have a number of different things. We have some things that are furniture and uh, some things that are plumbing fixtures. And because we have different suppliers and installers for furniture, plumbing fixtures, lighting fixtures, and equipment of various types, we have separate schedules for each of these categories. Let's go to View, Schedules, Schedule Quantities. Let's just do furniture first. OK. And there are a lot of different options for furniture, really just what I want to have. We want a type mark. Each of these has a type mark as well, so that all these similar chairs have a similar type mark. So type mark for sure. And we want to know what its family is. And then what its type is. Oh, sorry, family add. Its type. So this would be like, well, we'll just, we'll see how that works. Uh, and let's just see how that goes. Let's do count, because I know we're going to want to summarize all these by how many there are. Okay. So here I have um, all these different things. And again, this is a case where I really want to combine these so that all these Aeron chairs are just grouped together. And we just see like how many of them there are, not individually listed. This was from another project, so we'll just see how, how this works out. So when we're doing our sorting and grouping, let's say uh, don't itemize every instance and sort by type mark. So we'll sort by the type mark, get all these together, summed up on one line. Okay. Okay, much easier to deal with here. I want to see how many of these are in each room. This is a little different. So under fields, up till now, we've been looking at the what's available for furniture. I also want to be able to specify what room they're in. So we'll just say room number. And then that shows up over here. And uh, I actually want to sort of have that up front. The position of the field doesn't affect how Revit uses it to sort things. Having it at the top of the list just reminds me that that is what I'm using to sort the schedule with. Sort by room number. Uh, and then by type mark. Okay, so room 100 has the following things in it. There's something other that, something's in it. I got two garment hooks that aren't in a room. Don't, don't know where they are yet. So again, I like this grouped by room so I can see what's in 100 and what's in 102 and what's in 103. And projecting to Schneider Hall, that would be, you know, what are in the, in the various uh, you know, studio rooms. So I'll go sorting and grouping, and I want to skip a line after the room number. So see what's in room 100, what's in room like that. And then the same way, I don't need to see these repeated. I just want to have the room 100 up front and then what's in it. So I'll go back to 
of formatting. I want to tell room number to be a hidden field, although still used. OK, and, but then I will be, want to be sure to have the room number up top here. Sorting and grouping, I do want a header for each of these sections that includes the room number. OK, so room number 100 has that. Room number 101 has that. Room number 102 has that. If instead of room number, I wanted to see that by department, fields. I don't have department as part of the furniture, but I do have a department as part of the room. Room department are there. Conceptually, I just want that up at the top. Okay. So there's by department. Uh, sort, sort by department. Have a header. And then by type mark. So we'll see everything that's in the, everything that finance has, everything that IT has, everything that research has. I'm going to add, add that space back in, blank line between sections. So as far as Schneider Hall goes, you know, it's, instead of department, instead of finance, we would be having photography, interior design, graphic design with all the parts that they have in here. And at this point also, I can turn off the column, hide the column department and just keep its head there formatting. So department, let's see, room number, department will be a hidden field. Try to get this as useful and compact as possible. Okay, so then we see that finance has all this. I can sort those by, by rooms within there. Let's just try that, sorting and grouping. Sort by room number, and then sort by type mark. Oh, let me turn room number back on. A room number is still a hidden, a hidden field. Finance. I still have to do sorting grouping. Uh, room number, blank line after room number as well. Okay, so within finance, I have all this inside the room. Okay, nice. Okay, so now in the finance department, in room 11, I have this, and let's turn, let's, we can hide that line again. Formatting, we can hide uh, room number again. Hide the column, but not the number. Okay, so with, there we have it sorted by department, by room, to know what's, what's inside uh, all of those. So that's something that Excel really could not be doing unless we'd fit it a lot of information and done a lot of uh, maneuvering it around. And it, at this point, uh, you know, this is all live. And uh, let's see what it looks like out on the on the sheet. This is our furniture schedule. We haven't placed it yet. I think that's going to need a new sheet. So let's just go to sheets, new sheet, pick that same one, OK, and drag that furniture schedule over. That's a lot. <laughs> but we'll drag this out. We'll drag that out pretty far. We'll drag that out pretty far and drag count out just a little bit. I'm trying to get this so enough so I don't have any, um, not too many two line entries. Oh, and again, I've, I've got to change this down to this, the smaller font. So here we are, appearance, eighth inch aerial, three thirty seconds inch aerial, okay. And then we go back to our number on the sheet. Okay, it's way, way longer, way bigger than it needs to be. Type mark, and, oops, can drag down to there.
these won't get cut off if they're if they don't fit they will just wrap okay so this will certainly need to be cut once split oops move them over here Okay, so that's that's the basic outlook. There's a lonely little garment hook here somewhere, not in a room, two of them, not in a room somewhere. Um, if we decide that we just don't know where they are and we want to get rid of them, we can go back to the furniture schedule. I'll highlight that line, right click, and delete that row. And that will delete those garment hooks wherever they are, but they're not in a room, so I don't know what the deal is. They might be outside the building. Yes. Okay. Now, there's also a, a line here I wanted to get rid of. Where am I? Appearance. I will undo that. That was this blank line up here. Pulls that up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. And that split well, be, so we get 10, 103 um, at the top. Oh, it's right here, so actually sales. That's a whole new uh, category, so I want to be sure to split that there. So. We get sales up at the top, and then room 103 and everything 103 and 104. So there's that. We can set this up. We can set up smaller schedules that just show the furniture in each room. And that was what was done for this project originally. There'd be that, plus uh, a plan and some other descriptive information on an eight and a half by 11 sheet and a binder for, for big project. That's where you use the filter tab to say where room number equals such and such, and then it, it generates the schedule for that for that room number. Anyway, so here's this pretty cool. All your furniture is sorted by department, by room, and then counted by type mark. So that's a furniture schedule. Now, if we go back to the ff &E plan, let's see what else we might have here. I mean, I, there's probably some equipment in here that isn't furniture. Uh, the furniture schedule only schedules things in the category furniture. So I'm going to select this table, right click, and hide in view category. I'm going to hide all the furniture just to see what's left. So we've got uh, a lighting, we've got a lighting fixture, we've got oh, it's a table lamp. Okay, we've got a table lamp. That's a lighting fixture. We've got specialty equipment. Um, mouse and keyboard, specialty equipment, telephone, specialty equipment, coat racks. Let's uh, let's let's hide the specialty equipment as well, and then we just have the lighting fixtures. And uh, this is generic model. That really should be specialty equipment, if you ask me. But. There it is, and then some plumbing fixtures. So we can make separate schedules, plumbing fixtures, separate one for specialty equipment, uh, and, and that's fine. That's all, all the electronics and stuff. Uh, this is a little weird being somewhere in the middle as a lighting fixture as opposed to furniture with a lamp on it, but uh, we'd include that as maybe as part of the lighting fixture schedule once we do that for the ceiling plans. Anyway, we'll turn these back on. So what we end up with is the uh, shaded by department, and then tallying our room areas by department with subtitles for each one. Then a door schedule for individual items sorted by their mark. Window schedule, all the windows sorted by their type mark. And then over here we have the furniture schedule sorted by department, and then by room, and then by type mark for furniture. 
So that's about all I know how to do with schedules in Revit, and I hope you enjoy this and can use it in your projects. Over and out.